Hello everybody and welcome. This is Spoonie with another shipbuilding tutorial for Starbase. Today we're going to go over buttons, progress bars, and some very basic YOLOL. Now that we've got a ship that actually flies, we're going to place down some buttons and some progress bars to give us some indication of what's actually going on on our ship. So the first thing we're going to do is place down a button that will give us a way to turn on or off our generator. We're going to use a hybrid button because a hybrid button combines both a text panel and a button. So that way, if we forget what it does later, it'll be easy to know at a quick glance. So in your asset browser, under devices and controls, we're going to find hybrid button. You can also search for it. Like the control plates, it's a good idea to rotate this before you try to place it down, just because it can be a bit finicky. Don't forget to bolt it down. Now select the button. Where it says button state, this is where you'll set the value that you actually want to change, or whatever device it is you're wanting to control. Button on state value is whatever it will output, button off state value is what it will output whenever the button is off, and the button style controls how you interact with it. When it's set to zero, it is a non-fixed position, so if you press the button down, as soon as you let go of it, it will come right back up. If you set it to 1, which is what we want, when you press it down, it will stay down until you press it again. So since we want this button to control our generator, we're going to select it and change where it says button state. You can have this say whatever you want, but for me, I'm just going to call it gen, G-E-N. The button on state value, which controls the value that it outputs, we're going to set to 100, and that'll put our generator at maximum strength. You can also have this be at 50, 30, or whatever percentage you'd like. Next, we're going to go over to our generator, select all three generator units, not the fuel chamber, just the generator units. And where it says generator unit rate limit, we're going to delete everything except the GEN. If you decided to use a different name value, type that in here. Now let's test it. You can see the button is pressed down and the generator is on. When we press it, the generator has turned off. Now, let's place down a progress bar so we can set up an indicator to show us how much fuel is remaining in our fuel rods. So, go to our asset browser, type in progress bar, and you can see there's two varieties, a large and a small. We're going to choose the small. Once again, we'll need to bolt this down. Now to get this to output the value that we want, the first thing we're going to do is go over to our fuel chamber, select it, and in the properties box, you can see where it says fuel chamber fuel. We're going to change this to chamber one. You can change this to anything you'd like, but if you wanted to upgrade your ship later and add a second generator, this makes it really easy to just name that one chamber two. Next, go back to your panel select it, and in the properties box under panel name, or panel value, change panel value to chamber one. Here you can see it is now outputting the value that we want. Where it says panel max value, this will represent these bars. So even though it's saying 300,000, which is the maximum storage capacity of a fuel rod, these bars will not begin to degrade until the value is under 100. So that can be confusing because it can make it seem like we have a full fuel rod even when we're very close to empty. So to solve this, we'll change the maximum value to 300,000. Now these bars will degrade along with our fuel rod. Next, let's add another progress bar for our batteries. So let's copy and paste this. 
place it right above. Don't forget to bolt these down. And instead of chamber one, we're gonna name this one to battery. Now, because we only have one battery bank, we'll only do this with a single battery. They'll degrade at the same rate, so whether it says 10,000 or 20,000 is kind of irrelevant. Now, if you had multiple battery banks, or you just wanted to know exactly how much charge you had, you could add these together using some basic YOLAL and a YOLAL chip, and I'll show you how to do that. So where it says stored battery power, we're going to change this to battery. Now let's test to make sure this is working. When you're not in test mode, this battery indicator will not show anything because the battery is showing zero stored energy. But when you enter test mode, you can see that it's full. Now because we copied and pasted, this is having a max value of 300,000, which is well above the maximum storage of our battery. So we're gonna change this down to 10,000, which is the maximum storage of a single battery. And there you go. You can see our fuel rod is degrading and our battery is staying at full charge. Now let's add one more progress bar for our propellant. So we're gonna search for progress bar. We won't copy and paste this time. Bolt it down. And we'll name this panel value to propellant. Next, we'll need to change the name value for gas container stored resource. We'll change this to propellant. And if you have multiple tanks, we can go through a similar process that I'll show you later with the batteries on how to combine them and have them show under a single progress bar. Now, since we don't know what the maximum storage is for a medium propellant tank, we can enter test mode, look at the tank, open our universal tool pressing U, and we can see that it's 4 million. So that's what we'll set the maximum value of our progress bar to. Now that you've got an idea of how to set up some basic buttons and some progress bars, let's go over some very basic YOLAL so that you can customize these even more. So to get started with any YOLAL setup, you're going to need a YOLAL chip. So go to your asset browser, and type in Y-O-L-O-L -L, or YOLAL, and you'll see that there are three types, the basic, the advanced, and the professional. They scale in that order, and they scale with the complexity of math that they're capable of handling. But if you're just using some basic scripts, some greater than, less than, equal to, and some simple arithmetic, then the basic is typically fine. So to get started, we'll place our chip down, and then in the properties box, we'll press edit script. It gives us 20 lines to work with, which will each read at 0.2 seconds, one after another. So let's have our progress bar for our batteries actually indicate the total amount of charge that we have instead of only indicating a single battery. To do that, we'll first need to assign a value to the progress bar. Since it's already assigned the value of battery, we'll just use that. To assign a value, you'll type a colon followed by the value. If you do not include this colon, it will still register the value, but it will not be carried outside of the YOLO script editor. We'll go over more of this if we have so many batteries that the addition takes up multiple lines. But since we only have two, we can just do the value battery is equal to the value of B1, which will be our first battery, followed by or plus the value of value B2 for our second battery. On the second line, we'll type go to one, which will tell the script to go back to the first line instead of wasting time by reading all of these empty lines before it updates our values. 
Now that we have those in place, we're going to go to our batteries and assign this battery to read out a value of B1 instead of just battery, and this battery to read out as B2. Next, we'll need a place to plug our chip in. You can use a rack chip reader if you have several YOLO chips, but since we just have the one, we're going to use a chip socket. Place it down. Don't forget to bolt it. And then we'll cable it. Next, we'll just put our chip in place. It'll just snap right into the chip socket. The direction that it's facing doesn't matter, but I'd like it to be facing us. Now let's test to see if it's working. And as you can see, our battery progress bar now reads out 20,000 instead of 10. Don't forget to change your maximum value so that the bars degrade appropriately with the value of the batteries. And then we're done. Now let's say we didn't want our generators running at 100%, because especially with a smaller ship like this, it's not necessary for our generators to be running at 100% to power everything, and that's just going to waste our fuel rods as we're going to go through them more quickly. One of the ways we can manually do this is to select our hybrid button and change our button on state value. You can think of this number as a percentage for the generators, whereas 100 is 100%, so let's change this down to 35, which should be plenty for a smaller ship like this. You will have to press this button off and on for this value to change and take effect, or we can edit a YOLO script with a simple if-then statement that will check our batteries and scale our generator accordingly. So to do this, we're going to create two if statements. The first we're going to put on the second line, so delete the go to one, and type if, which will tell YOLO that this is an if statement, the value of battery, and don't forget the colon, is less than, we'll say 5,000. Then we want the generator, so colon GEN, to be set to 100. And it's extremely important that we remember to end all of our if statements with the word end. If we forget to do this, they won't function properly. For our second if statement, we're going to type if the value of battery is greater than 19,900, which is 100 less than our maximum storage capacity for our batteries, then the generator can be set to 35. Then we'll end. On the next line, we'll type go to 1 so that it doesn't waste time reading all of these empty lines, and then we'll test it. So to test this, we'll enter test mode, open our YOLO chip by dragging down on the padlock, and checking to see what our generator is running at. It's currently set to 35, and that's because we have more than 19,900 stored in our batteries. But let's add a zero to both of these and see what happens to our generators. Now you can see, because we have less than 50,000 in battery storage, it has set itself to 100. If we remove those zeros, we can see it sets itself back to 35. So it is functioning properly. From here on out, we'll be focusing more on YOLOL and what you can do with the other ship utilities like mining lasers, ore collectors, and things like that.